Here's a fantasy hot take for you. I think that elves should have the same lifespan, live the same amount of time as humans. And dwarves, and gnomes, and even goblins. If you think I'm crazy, that I might just blow your mind. If you think I'm way wrong, that I might just change your mind. So stay with me. I'm the dungeon coach creator of DC20, and I'm currently creating the campaign setting in the entire world. I've been doing so much deep diving on world building, campaign creation, all that kind of stuff. And this topic came up. And I'm gonna give a tip of my hat over to Pointy Hat and his YouTube channel, who has been absolutely amazing. The content he makes is absolutely next level. Y'all, go over to his channel, talk to him, try and get him, I wanna, I wanna get in contact with this guy. I want to bring him in on the DC20 world building because man, he's got some great ideas. I want him to be a part of that. But here's what we're talking about. We are going to talk about and break down the concept of what if all fantasy races lived for the same amount of time. That's a big twist because elves in some settings live for thousands of years or dare I say, or mortal. And in fact, almost all ancestries or races, whatever you want to call them, dwarves, gnomes, they all live longer than poor little humans. And then yes, you have something like goblins or kobolds that live shorter amounts of time, smaller lifespan, smaller creatures, whatever. So let's shake things up. I'm going to talk about why I think it's a problem, especially in tabletop roleplay games. Now in stories writing and books and stuff, I could totally see that and that, that has played. But in tabletop roleplay games, the campaign settings and stuff like that, where players are playing characters in, I don't like it. We're going to talk about all that and at the end I'm going to put a big old twist on everything about how you could have longer lifespans introduced into your game. Alright, so what do I not like and what weird things happen in these games and if you have other ones that I leave out, leave them down in the comments. I don't like that elves are just, I'm, in general I'm also going to be using elves versus humans for this, but you can replace elves with anything that lives longer than the human and you also could replace humans with anything that lives anything shorter than that. It's whatever. I'm going to use humans as the short, let's just say 100 year lifespan, even that's probably like 80 or something and elves let's just say they're uh, 300 years some settings longer some shorter but that's definitely way more that'll be our baseline for this little comparison here i don't like that elves are just straight up better than humans if you were to take some trade skill some sort of crafting skill basket weaving elves are just gonna be better because they have hundreds of years more to practice the stories are told about elven archers and their their archery is so refined and they have so they practice so much and they can aim so much at their sword and have, they've lived for so long and skills in general they're just able to be better at it. I'm totally fine with elven archers being cool and scary and intimidating because of their magical eyesight. That's cool. That's unique. That's a cool fantasy race bonus that they get. But them just being better leather workers and tradesmen and skill crafters and whatever because they live so long they just have a straight up edge over humans. Really pops the humans bubble because if you think about it you could be a 70 year old blacksmith that has mastered the craft of blacksmithing but you're actually on your way out, you're about to die, you can't really hit the hammer like you could because you're old and aging. An elf the same age could literally be like, oh, I've never blacksmithed before. As they're 80 years old looking at you, they could pick up the craft of blacksmithing and work on it for 100, 200 years, get better than you, and then be like, ha. Huh. I don't know, it really just doesn't speak to me, especially when you can have players choosing playable character races in the world to be able to be one. And then you get the concept of apathy. If something has been a tradition for 300 years, this kingdom has stood established for three we have this religious practice has done this for 300 years an elf would see that and think who cares whereas humans would see that and be like ha oh, that's generations worth oh my goodness and the the depth of history and when you explain worlds and whenever you start doing world building things start to not really make as much sense and if you world builders out there might know stay tuned there's gonna be a bunch of world building stuff coming on this channel a bunch of resources i'm making a whole bunch of stuff i'm diving down the rabbit hole but history and timelines become weird whenever it wouldn't really even matter to some races but it would be so long many generations for another why wouldn't all kingdoms rulers and politicians that want to stay and rule for a long period of why when they all just be elves. I don't know if it's because I'm a dad now and I have a three-year-old, one-year-old, and I think about fantasy races intermingling, and you have an elf and a human, and they would make a half-elf. That combo is going to make children that live longer than the human, but shorter than the elf, and then there's a concept of whenever you marry somebody, they outlive you, and then they die, and then they you, you keep living, and then you find somebody else. Yes, you can tell great stories with that. I am not taken away from that at all. In stories and writing books, yes, you can tell great stories, and that, that's a really dynamic, that's interesting and different and all that kind of stuff. But when you're talking about player characters in a TTRPG setting, I don't know, I, I just don't, I don't know, it doesn't speak to me. I think it would feel bad once again for humans to reproduce with an elf, and instead of an elf having elf children that live the same age as them, now they have to have children that live less than them. They will probably outlive their own children, I don't know, just, but. So what if all ancestries live the same amount of time? You would be able to have, whenever someone says they're 50, 
They would be 50 and immersion at the table. And if there's a dwarf that's a 50 year old dwarf, you could describe them and you'd be in, in the dungeon master space. You'd be in the pocket. You'd understand that. You'd be able to relate to it more. A dwarf and a tiefling could have children and they'd be stocky little devil people and they'd live the same amount of time. Another little sneak peek of the world building in the campaign setting of DC 20 that you might have seen if you saw the ancestry video I released on DC 20's ancestry system. All races, you're able to choose what your, what your mom was and what your dad were. And it's a blend between them. One of the players in my camp campaign is a giant born and dwarf born and they have fused together and the those two ancestries had a baby that kind of looks like a stocky human dwarfs being a little shorter than humans giant born being a little taller than humans they've averaged out to be a yoked out human how cool is that you can just mix and blend these things together to create a very unique world and you can think outside the box with these two pairing combinations and a smooth transition here is that same player character wanted to role play an older character which leads us to another big problem with ancient ancient fantasy races and player characters wanting to be, you can't role play older characters. Characters that come from an ancient, long-lived ancestry lives hundreds of years. We ran into this problem where we're like, well, well dwarves, if you want to be an old dwarf, you're going to be like 120 or 150 or something. Okay. Oh. How on earth do you explain a 150 year old man of doing stuff for 150 years? It's a lot of backstory to fill in, even if it's just like mundane, random, boring stuff. And then out of nowhere, now they're going to be an adventurer and they put on their boots and now they start leveling up and stuff. Ah, and if that's not a problem to you, you want to hand wave it. My player actually was like, oh, it's just I, I screwed around for a little bit. It's fine. And I was like, oh, I want these to make sense. And I want the world to make sense. I know I'm going to have a dungeon master mind, but I feel like that's not something I want my players to have to go through if they want to roll play an older character if all fantasy races were the same his character's 50 years old okay cool his character's 50 years old and we had a whole little bit of a story where he owned a bar his parents did a brewery thing he went over here joined a fighting ring found he could fight and then oh my gosh and then took him later in life and now he's kill killing it so yes we had to fill in 50 years worth of a backstory and all this kind of stuff but then at least it wasn't 120 so if i've missed anything as far as what clunky things that maybe you've experienced yourself as creating a player or you've experienced yourself as a dungeon master creating worlds timelines histories uh, and it's weird because you want to have a long-lived ancient elven civilization it takes a lot longer than the human or the goblin or whatever and in fact i have one more thing i'd have to say let's use goblins for an example lots of people are like well goblins live shorter because they live squalid lives and they live in a, a very low and they live in the dirt and mud and they just eat this small uh, yeah sure real quick little time out right there when you describe that you're not describing a race you're describing an environmental circumstance around a section of people so yes i would agree if a section of people regardless of what fantasy race they were in this case we're using goblins Goblins, but if they were to constantly live in squalid terms and just live in these very, very bad conditions, yes, over time, they would have a shorter lifespan. Of course, that happens in humans, of course, but we're talking about the goblin fantasy race right here. So if a goblin is born in a kingdom and is from a long line of goblins that were born in ancient magical kingdoms and castles that have absolutely fine living, those goblins should not die the same rate as these ones. So overall, I don't think you should just be screwed because you were born a certain race and then your lifespan is now predetermined, magically so, for whatever reason, to be an elf and you live forever, or you're a goblin and you're screwed. Maybe I should have used the goblin in this analogy the whole time. It would have really exaggerated more. You see what I'm saying? So now in the spirit of pointy hat, another shout out to you, bro, is let's put a twist on this whole thing. And technically this would be a double twist because I took the original concept of races living in different increments of time and took a twist on it to what if I made them all the same but now let's do a double twist huh I mean I got two pointy hats on what if people and I'm purposely using the word people or groups of civilizations what if people did have different lifespans but what if it wasn't dependent on what fantasy race they were and it depended on other more interesting and more magical reasons what if people from a certain area lived longer if you lived in this certain region anyone all sorts of ancestries and races that lived in this region just lived longer that alone is crazy. I just got chills thinking about it. That kingdom's people live longer. Is it going to get attacked more? People from all over would just travel to the city, even if they weren't allowed in, just to live next to the walls of the castle so they'd prolong their life and live longer just being in the area. Or maybe what if it's not the area? What if it's certain followers of a certain deity that you put into your world? There's a certain deity. If you follow this deity, you literally live longer. Or what if that deity that everyone thinks is a good, nice, positive deity that lets everyone live longer, what if they're not a good deity? What if they're an evil one and they're purposely lets you live longer so they have more access to your soul which makes them stronger and we're on like three or four layers of twists here changing it up
up again. What if it's a certain place has food? There's a certain, which is in the DC 20 campaign setting, little, little clues here. There's a section of forest that is rich and vibrant. It's like an Amazon jungle of forest with sentient life, smarter creatures, larger plants. There's certain waters here, certain rain droplets, certain pools of water that have longer lifespan. There's a tribe of people. It's not a huge city, but there's a tribe of people that live around this patch of water, protect it, curate it, and protect it from others, even protect it from people from finding out about it, from the certain evils that people could do with this longer lifespan. They protect these waters because it's the water that makes them live longer. Maybe certain artificers and mages have taken samples of this water, taken it back, found out ways to replicate it, and replicate it in other cities. What if they've condensed these magics into little gemstones that they make necklaces of, and there's a certain people, a certain section, a faction or so, where they wear this necklace and it makes them live longer. Maybe there's a city that has these medallions and gives them to their most upstanding citizens that earn and prove themselves, and they give this to them, now giving them longer life. What if you are one of these people? What if you're a renowned scientist that now gets this medallion of honor? You're a human. You shouldn't be living long. Everyone lives the same, right? You have this medallion now. You've figured out stuff. It's almost like a, a, a what's that called? Peace Prize. Nobel Peace Prize. It's like you've won the Nobel Peace Prize, but now you live longer. Wait a second. What does that mean for your family? You now live longer for sure than your wife and children. What does that mean? Do you even want this now? What if part of the bargain for this is when you earn this prestige, you also earn it for your immediate family? Time out, stop. Do you see what I'm talking about here? Everything I just went on in this last little rant and however many minute or however long that was, that's so much more interesting to me at least than all uh, predetermined assignments of a uh, lifespan for different races. Oh, elves are here, dwarves and sorry humans, uh, really sorry no, uh, goblins, whatever. And then you have to remember that and like, oh, let me create care. Bah, no, what if? They were all the same. And there's lots of really cool similarities. We get we, Players at the table will be able to relate to that more. If you see a gnome and they look super old, you could estimate about how old that person is. And you don't have to think, oh, that probably means they're 200 and whatever. And yes, I know it's so interesting that people live different lifespans. It is, I'm not denying that. And then the entire rant that I just went on shows that I agree with that. Differences between us is what makes interesting dynamic things. The differences between us watching this videos, it makes things very interesting how you play your games how I play my games we're all different and it's beautiful and I want that difference to be represented magically in a fantasy setting instead of pre-prescribed through what race you were born as Whoa, that's crazy if you are interested in this video this is a different video than the ones I usually make I've been making a lot of DC 20 videos obviously those are still gonna keep coming but I'm gonna make some world building videos I have a massive resource that I'm building up to be able to try and give get you guys so you can kind of help this thing out and I'm going to replicate the process I am going through right now I'm not only building a campaign setting from scratch, a campaign itself from scratch that I'm running with my table right now. We just had our session zero. We start playing next week. Let's go. If you like these ideas, share them around, subscribe. Like I usually never ask for that type of stuff, but I want to see this type of video if you guys like it. And if you do, let me know. And if this DC 20 campaign world setting sounds interesting, that is going to be a future project and a current project I'm working on right now with the whole DC 20 thing. If you don't know what DC 20 is, you can check the description out and I have a whole bunch of videos that are about DC 20. And if you want to support and check it out for yourself, the alpha rule system is available now and the Kickstarter happens this June. So until next time, stay creative, think outside the hat. That's another hat joke, pony hat. I freaking want to talk to you, bro. You're a freaking genius. Let's go. Let's collaborate together. Let's go. Peace.